Today we're going to talk about a user experience principle called user flows. Uh, so first things we're going to do is go over the basics. Uh, we'll keep this nice and short, but in the end, hopefully you understand why you use user flows and what they are a little better. So what is a user flow? Uh, basically, it's the path taken by a user to complete a task. Great. So, who cares? You should, as a designer, as a user experience professional, as a UI person, you should care. Because that lets us map out every path a user would take for a given task, ensuring that we account for every interaction, screen, state. Um, it really helps us build out scenarios and requirements that we may not have thought of beforehand. Um, you know, that said, you should also do a requirements document, but, um, really it lets us get into things, um, that we may have missed. So what does that look like? Well, user flows can take many forms. Uh, there's many different types. Um, the typical one that I'm used to doing and have been doing for 15 years now um, consists of four kind of standard elements. I mean, you can throw some others in there, but the big ones are user actions. So, you know, clicks on login, uh, system actions. So a system displays an error, captures an email address, um, redirects. There's actual, the screens. So like a home screen product page, a modal, and then there's decisions. So was the password correct? And then paths based on that decision. So yes or no. So can there be more than one flow? Absolutely. And there should be. There should be at least one or more flows for each major task. Uh, and then your user flows can link together through um, directions to other user flows. So you can see an example here. You've got the user adds the product to the cart, the system updates the item count, and you get an added to cart screen, and do they want to continue shopping? If yes, they close that modal or click continue. If no, they click checkout, and then that will drive you to the checkout flow. Now, there can be multiple, this isn't a full flow either, but what you want to do is make sure that you have a flow for every major task, and that helps us account for every little detail um, in that UI. So let's look at a quick example. Uh, so this would be like an e-commerce flow, um, a simple one, browsing products. So you start with a home screen and there can be multiple entry points as well. Um, I simplified this one a little bit, but you can get as complex as you need to. But for this example, you start at the home page. The user wants to browse featured products. Did they find a product they liked? Uh, if it was yes, they could either click that product tile and that will take us into the product details flow or they just straight click add to cart and that does your added cart screen, ask if they want to continue shopping. If they don't and they're done, they go to checkout. If they do, they click continue and they're back to browsing. So if they're done on the home page, basically, then they could click products. So now I've directed them to the products page. And from the products page, there's multiple paths they can take. And these don't necessarily need a decision point. These can just be multiple flow points off the same screen. So the first one is they want to browse products. So they browse products. They click a product tile. They go to the product details page. But maybe they want to go into filters. So they go and they select their filters. Now we have a filtered products update. Uh, so a screen showing not only the filters, but the updated products based on the filters. Um, from there, they would browse products, find what they want. Either click a product tile or add to cart. Or they could clear the filters, which would bring them back to the regular products page. And they would re repeat that cycle over and over. So you can see this is an example of a, a fairly basic standard kind of e-commerce flow. So what it does, like I mentioned, this lets us take 
break it down when we're designing. Uh, um, you take it one step further. So this tells us that an entire screen needs to be designed. That's good. Okay. This could be a modal. It could be a full page. It could be a variation of a page. It could be like you could have a product page or a product page filtered or a product page uh, with no results. Um, these user actions have the potential to showcase that we need a design state or additional interaction requirements within that design. So here, when they clear the filter, that tells us that we need to have a clear filters button or action. Um, and select filters tells us that we need to have selectable filters and we need to show that there's been a product update as well. So here you can see it kind of like starts to flesh out a lot of the requirements that we may not have thought about when initially designing our, our application screen. And then if you want to go even further, you could take it and once you start designing, you can start dropping your screens in place of those screen boxes. So if you have your home screen, I've now replaced the home screen with an actual screen. And then you can start checking uh, against your user actions for that screen. Um, and this becomes kind of, it can be super helpful, um, especially if you start wiring up these in a prototype outside of this as well. Then you can kind of check against each thing as you run the prototype. So what do you use for user flows? You can use whatever you want, really. You can use any diagramming tool. You can use Figma. Um, if you're a Figma user, obviously the best thing to use would be FigJam because it's super easy. And we can actually just take a quick look at that right now. Um, so there's a bunch of different widgets that let you put wireframes and all that kind of stuff. But if you're not familiar with FigJam, you can choose shapes. So right here, you could just, you know, I'm going to do a, a, a green one for screens. So put that there. And this would be a home screen. So you just type home. Shrink that up a little bit. And then if you want to direct to another one, it'll automatically add it in for you. So that's fine. You do that. And then you're like, well, that's not a screen. So if you want to change the color, maybe user actions will be yellow. And we'll change them to rounded rectangles. So now you've got a user action. Clicks. Product. Whoa. Clicks product tile. And then from there, you can do another one, or you can change it again. Maybe this one's a decision. In stock. And then you can go down here. This is a screen, so it would be having trouble typing today. Product tile. And no, you would change it to uh say like these aren't correct but the nice thing is you can click on these and I have no so now you can see we can easily start building out a user flow and you can start duplicating these like if there's multiple actions you know just like you would with Figma and the best part is when you want, if you want to import this, you can just bring it back into your Figma file. You can actually paste your user flow in. So now you can start working on it. And you can even take this and connect it to your screen. Look at that. Pretty cool stuff. 
So I would say Fig Jam. That's it for this one. Um, quick recap. If you have a need for uh, user flows, uh, which you should in any product development or design you do, make sure that you are doing one per major, at least one per task, and user flows can connect to other user flows. And make sure you go through them as you would. So think about yourself using the app and what you would like to do. And then that'll also start to create different scenarios um, that you come up with as well for, you know, how you would use that app. And that, that should help you derive uh, any requirements that you need for your screens out of it. <clears throat> After this, I would say you could start mapping your requirements to a requirements document or even just writing out requirements per each screen in Figma um, kind of as a checklist and make sure that you can have that readily available to, to check your designs against. Um, this is a quick overview of user flows. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out my Patreon, and check out my other videos, my tutorials. Thanks for watching.